Welcome back to the Park Wizard and today I am giving gonna do a nice review of Universal Studios Hollywood. And if you like these reviews, please let me know in the comments below. Give this video a like, give this video a thumbs up, and comment below if you like these videos. I'll even put a poll on the top of the video. Um if you want to you know, tell me discuss if you like it or not. But today we're gonna discuss Universal Studios Hollywood. Universal Studios Hollywood is a uh, movie studio. It's a, it's a working movie studio. It's the oldest working movie studio in the world, and it's built on a hill. There, um, since it's built on a hill, there's there's now two lands, so to speak, or two areas. There's an upper lot and the lower lot, um, separated about a bank of five five banks of escalators, which is incredible. And in those uh, banks of escalators, there's a lower lot, upper lot, which makes this park very landlocked. And that means there are only 10 rides <laughs> and three total shows at this location. There's actually mm, four or five, actually, if you consider <laughs> Hey Potter and the Forbidden Journey. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Yeah, 10 rides, these shows, um, some third rides, mostly screen rides. I'm going to go over each, you know, each and every ride and attraction right now, and let's get to it. So first over here we have Harry Potter in The Forbidden Journey. This attraction is one of my favorites at the parks. It has a beautiful castle. I mean, look at that castle. Beautiful castle, and it is um, a beautiful queue, and it's literally based right off of the Harry Potter movies, not a specific movie, and it's not like a specific um time frame, but just overall, just all the movies together. They have the same exact attraction in Orlando where it originated. Um, so if you've been in the one in Orlando, it's the same thing here. But it's still one of my favorite attractions, and I'm sure I'm I'm very happy that they they're able to bring it here because there there are screens, but there are. Plenty of animatronics and highly themed sets as well, so I'm glad that um, we were able to, that was <laughs> able to be brought here. Also, there's another attraction land called Flight of the Hippogriff, which is just a small kitty coaster, but it's pretty highly themed as well, and has uh, even Hagrid's Hut is right there too. Um, but here's one of the shows I was talking about: this is the Dark Art Show, um, only in Harry Potter land. There's also um, another show, the Frog Choir, that goes on a few times daily but this is actually a projection and drone show that doesn't happen all the time it's seasonal this this one it happens in the summertime and at the end there's um, a lovely drone um i won't ruin the drone surprise but there are some really cool drones in the air which is awesome and the projection mapping on the show is absolutely incredible um i wish universal would bring this back maybe this summer when the park reopens but yeah it's definitely a seasonal show and, and that's why I kind of separated from the rest of the shows on here, because it is just for Harry Potter, and or just for the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Moving on, we have Despicable Me, and you can't really see, it's to the left of you, you see the, there's the Minion Meet and Greet there, and then there's Super Silly, Super Silly Funland right there. Um, this is actually from an old construction update video that I filmed um, a few months ago, so that's why there's not like a clear view of Super Silly Fun Land, but it's to the left, and they have a water park uh, carousel, uh, like a aerial carousel, just, it's like a Dumbo, but it's super slow moving Dumbo, and Despicable Me, which is just a motion simulator based ride, which is a massive screen, and <laughs> sounds like the Simpsons ride, basically, with less mu movement. And speaking of the Simpsons ride, that's our next ride. The Simpsons ride is just like the Spitable Me, but just with more with more movement, and you're um, it's kind of more personalized. Um, you the the Spitable Me is like a theater, it's a massive theater attraction. You can see all the other vehicles. This uh Simpsons is a theater attraction, but um you can't see the other vehicles. Moving on next is Kung Fu Panda or DreamWorks Theater. It's officially called DreamWorks Theater because they're gonna rotate um, DreamWorks movies in and out, in and out of the attraction. Right now it's Kung Fu Panda Adventure, which is really awesome because they have a great projection um, screen. And I'll link my top five best Universal rides video up here. But they have a great no, projection 
that is projection magnet that is used in that attraction and they updated attraction that was not used for Shrek 4D. <laughs> Here is Jurassic World, um, which is was Jurassic Park and got rethemed to Jurassic World. It is the Universal's only Universal Hollywood's only water ride and it's located on the lower lot. Everything else we discussed has been on the upper lot and now we're switching to the lower lot where we have Jurassic World, Transformers, and the Mummy. And here's the Mummy attraction. It is an indoor launched roller coaster. And again, I'll look these are all on my top five best universal ride videos. So if you want more details, I'll link the video above. That's just an indoor launch coaster goes zero to forty miles per hour. And has that indoor and dark ride segment. Then there's that launch. This is filmed in low light by the coaster views. You'll be able to see the track. But there's that LSM launch. And then just a low level, it doesn't go no crazy drops or anything, just a nice family fun coaster. Last attraction on the lower lot is Transformers. That is basically the same ride system as the Spider-Man Adventure Ride or Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man Ride at um, Orlando, a motion-based um, simulator, um, flight simulator ride going through the world of Transformers, all screens. Now, the one thing that's super unique to Universal Hollywood is the studio tour, and that's actually this attraction no, was there before as a theme park. They want to show off the studio to visitors. So all the way back in the like 1950s, you can continue to ride a different version of the studio tour. And the studio tour has evolved over the years. And they've added like attractions like the earthquake attraction that we just came out of. And um, Jaw, the Amity River, where they have um, Bruce, the shark from Jaws. Um, comes in Greece, you have King Kong 3D, Fast Fair Supercharged, you know, you go through different sets, the back lot, um, the Psycho House, there's a lot of cool stuff you can see, and it's really, if you like movies, this is, this is the one thing you've come to Universal for, and basically anyone, because this is the, the studio tour, at, the studio tour is basically the only tram ride within the theme park, you know, working movies, the working movie studio, on the entire planet. So you definitely want to go to Universal whether you hate movies or love movies. This is really it's a 45 minute long ride. It's really um it's a really really cool experience and you actually learn a lot. And you different depending on the day you actually get to see actors filming their movies and TV shows such as Will and Grace which goes right by the projections you do for that. So you can see the actors of the stars of Will and Grace Will and Grace going to their set which is really awesome and it's definitely an experience worth seeing, worth doing if you're going to Universal Studios Hollywood. It's basically what put this mark, this park on the map and gained Universal enough recognition to allow to, them to expand to Florida and the rest of the world. So definitely go see that. And now we're going to move on to the three shows they have. They have a really cool animal show called Animal Actors. And it's where highly trained animals you know, do like, cool stunts and skits. It's almost like something you'd see at SeaWorld, but instead of SeaWorld, it's at Universal. And these are, all these animals, though, have been in movies and TV shows, and that's what makes them special compared to just the typical zoology, zoological theme park um, animal show. Every single one of these animals has been, had fact in movies like Dr. Doolittle and such. Then there's a special effects show, which is um, located literally right next to the special effects stage. is located right next to the animal actor show, where they show you how to do special effects in all types of movies. Make fire, make earthquakes, make thunder, make rain. It's really cool. You should definitely check that out. Um, it runs only a few times a day, but definitely um, make time for it. You should really make time for all the shows. And one thing you should really make time for is Waterworld. Waterworld is probably the most famous Universal show. So famous, it gets it's getting its own land at Universal or Orlando's Epic Universe theme park, and it has its own land at Universal Singapore and other Universal parks as well. Because Waterworld, even the movie was a box office bomb. The show was really cool, and you can't see it here on this clip, but in the end, um, a massive plane just comes shooting over the fence and into the uh, the bay 
as a grand finale when everything's on fire. It's really, really cool, and you should definitely see it when it's going. It's kind of seasonal. It doesn't run in the wintertime, but does run in the summertime. And lastly, next to Universal, um, the theme park right next to it is City Walk. Basically like downtown Disney, but it's more more hip, more edgier, and I think much better executed than downtown Disney. They have, like, like I said, NBC Sports Grill and all these cool establishments and entertainment to um, bars to restaurants, and there's me, guys, and um, really cool. I don't know, Really cool apparel brands and all these cool stuff. There's Tilly's, there's the It's Sugar, which is a massive candy store, and there's constantly going through Saint um changes. There's a Chocolate Toothsome Emporium coming, I'm um, in 2021, and an NBC Sports Girl coming this year with new fancy tiny restaurants like Vino or Vivo that have opened in the past year. Um, and it's definitely much much better executed in my opinion than uh, Downtown Disney. Um, so much so that a lot of the LA Los Angeles population comes to City Walk just to hang out for the night um, and not even go to Universal Studios. Which is why after 6 p.m., when the park closes, park goes at 6 p.m., the parking lot, so just for City Walk, the parking goes down, goes from like $29 or whatever it is during the day to just $10. Because it becomes more of a local's hangout spot and there's lots of cool birthday parties and it's really fun there's movie theater and there's a five tower stage where people can perform city walk it's definitely a great place to spend the night um or spend your evening after you came from a long day or from a uh, decent day at the parks parks usually open from 9 a.m to 6 p.m except in some time it's open until 10 p.m and city walks open until like 2 a.m so lots of cool stuff there um, but also, that, that was it. That's my review of Universal Studios Hollywood. What do you think? Have you been to Universal Studios before? If you do, if, if so, what is your favorite part about Universal Studios? Comment below, and again, let me know if you want me to do more, um, reviews. I'll do one for Disneyland, I'll do from, one for Six Flags, and let me know what you guys think. But, that's all for it right now. Um, subscribe if you like this, and as always, have a fantastic day.